Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we investigate a series of creepy VHS tapes as we explore the story and secrets of Amanda the Adventurer. This video will take place over three distinct segments. Firstly, a basic overview of Amanda's story on a surface level. Then, a look at each of the six secret tapes. And finally, a look at the hidden story these tapes reveal. While this is not intended to be a theory video, it will at least give you a clear understanding of the story Amanda the Adventurer sets out to tell, and serve as a basis for any potential theory related content I may dive into in the future. So sit back, relax, and let's explore the sinister story of Amanda and her hapless sidekick Wooly. Oh, it's you. Whatever you do, don't. Our story opens with a letter, a letter addressed to a character called Riley from their Aunt Kate who recently passed away. Aunt Kate seems troubled, telling Riley she wishes she had been able to tell them everything. She bequeaths them her house as well as a mysterious tape in the attic. However, Kate warns Riley that once they watch the tape, there is no going back. And so, during one stormy night, Riley arrives at the house and heads upstairs to the attic. The attic is full of children's toys. Everything from toy ovens to a keyboard and talking robot. There are also several locked objects. A chest, lockbox, safe, and a locked closet. At the far side of a room is a work area with a notice board. By taking a look at the information pinned to this board, we learn a little more about Aunt Kate and what she had been up to. We learn that Aunt Kate's full name was Catherine Park and that she had worked as a librarian at a children's library where she received a certificate of excellence. However, outside of her day job, it seems Kate was something of a private investigator and had been working on a case involving a missing child named Jordan. Her client, Jordan's elder sister Joanne Cook, had enlisted Kate's help after her brother disappeared two years prior, a tragedy which led to the death of her grief-stricken parents soon after. While police assumed Jordan had been snatched by a random stranger from the street, Joanne believed there was more to her brother's disappearance. Joanne approached Kate for help because she had once frequented the library she worked at and watched the show Amanda the Adventurer at Kate's recommendation. It seems Kate recommended the Amanda show to families who visited her library. However, as Joanne comments, Amanda the Adventurer changed over time and became quite unsettling, developing a hypnotic trance over the children who watched it, including Jordan. The little girl on the show seemed to communicate directly with her brother and said some peculiar things to him. Could this show have something to do with Jordan's disappearance? The note concludes with Joanne mentioning that she knows about the other kind of work that Kate conducts outside of the library work others don't believe in. She feels she is being watched and asks to meet. This is where the letter ends, a letter that tells us Aunt Kate worked as a private eye who was potentially involved in supernatural investigation work and aiding Joanne whose brother disappeared after watching the Amanda show. After reading through this information, Riley notices a single Amanda the Adventurer tape labelled In the Kitchen. Beside the tape is a TV with a VHS player, and so Riley loads up the tape and is greeted with a seemingly innocent children's cartoon show. Hi, I'm Amanda. And I'm Wooly. Today we're going to make an apple pie. My favourite is peach pie. What's your favourite kind of pie? At various points during these tapes, the viewer is asked a question. Some questions have neutral answers based on personal preference, while others require the exact answer to be typed out in order to progress. Different answers can lead to different outcomes. To keep things simple in this video, we will be following mostly the correct answers and less deviating for story purposes. Good job! We can use a sharp knife. Uh, I don't think we're supposed to do that by ourselves. It's always good to be brave when you're by yourself. Look, I'm a pirate. 
<laughs> that doesn't seem safe. As you can see, Amanda and Woolly have very different personalities. Amanda seems excitable and eager to engage with the viewer, while Woolly is more reserved and nervous. Worrying about the lack of parental oversight and potential dangers a given situation may present. After watching the first tape, a table appears in the centre of the attic, and atop it sits the toy oven. Beside this oven are a selection of plastic fruits and a cooking dish. Riley must then follow the baking instructions Amanda gave them during a show to make the apple pie. However, upon doing so, the oven does not spit out a delicious apple pie, but rather tape number two. This one labelled, In Your Neighbourhood. There are several things to take note of during this tape. The first are the disturbing outlines seen on the street. These are eerily similar to the outlines set up to document the position of a body at a crime scene. Next, we notice the bold capital letters on the signs. C, B and F. Take note as we'll soon need these for an upcoming puzzle. The tape also begins to distort at certain points, revealing that some scenes may not be all that they first seem. The tone of tape 2 is more unsettling with Amanda appearing worried that she may not be able to mail a package to her friend, and Woolly trying to discourage her from doing so. Let's send this package to my friend! Their name is... Wait, I don't remember. Can you help me? We can come back tomorrow. You don't have to send that now. No, I have to send this to my friend. Help me! Who does the package need to go to? Amanda forgets her friend's name and asks the viewer to fill in a blank four-letter space. If we type in the name Kate, then Woolly becomes sad, but Amanda returns to her previous happy self. After watching this tape, we find the toy keyboard has appeared in the centre of the room. To access tape 3, Riley must play the correct sequence of notes. The note sequence is C, B, F, as highlighted on the tape by the various signs. Tape 3 is labelled, Oh No, Accidents, and begins in a startling manner. Oh, it's you. Whatever you do, don't... <laughs> oh no! Wooly had an accident! <laughs> Wooly tries to directly speak with Riley but is interrupted by Amanda, who has a furious expression on her face. This expression changes when she realises a viewer is watching. The tape is based around Amanda and the viewer getting Woolly to a hospital to treat his broken leg, a wound it is implied Amanda herself caused. Once at the hospital, we must pick the correct room and appropriate tool to help identify and fix Woolly's leg injury. After the tape concludes, a large pocket watch is sat atop the table. For it's also nearby a digital clock and wall clock at the far side of a room. The puzzle requires Riley to input three different times, each one found at a different point during the tape. Setting these clocks to their correct timings causes each of them to show an identical time, 5.15am. At this point, Riley heads over to the notice board and discovers that all previous information has vanished. In its place is a news article. The article is taken from newspaper The Kensdale Daily on March 24, 2000. Its author is Lacey Mitchell, who conducts an interview with a creator of Amanda the Adventurer, Sam Carlton. According to the article, Sam had been a struggling writer that based the character of Amanda on his adopted daughter Rebecca. The show had become wildly successful and made Sam something of a local celebrity. Pinning the news article to the notice board is a strange object. On close inspection, Riley realises this object is the missing hand for an old grandfather clock located nearby. By returning the hand to the clock and then setting its face to read 515, the compartment beneath opens up, revealing tape number 4 and a code for the safe. However, the safe has mysteriously disappeared, a cardboard box now found in its place. With no other options, Riley plays the fourth tape, labelled Everything Rots. In this tape, Amanda and Woolly are having a picnic in the park. Woolly comments that something smells bad, and Amanda asks the viewer to identify the source of the odour. The stench comes from a rotten sandwich, and when clicking on said food item, a creepy series of events begin to play out. Amanda begins describing different things that rot, and asks the question, Things rot when they are not alive anymore. Do 
you know what the opposite of alive is? That's right! The tree stump is dead. Dead is the opposite of alive. Good job! This leads to a sequence where the viewer must identify what has killed a fox. Woolly becomes increasingly worried, yet Amanda seems excited to investigate. Woolly tries to stop things from continuing, but before he can, the tape skips ahead and Amanda wraps things up. While doing so, she makes some disturbing comments. Amanda asks Riley if everything rots. At this point, we are able to answer yes, no, or any variant of this. While different answers elicit different responses from Amanda, the outcome is always the same. A horrifying demonic entity that has some similarities to Amanda herself emerges from the attic door and chases over to Riley, consuming them. See? Everything is fine here. It's all fine. pre-recorded show, but rather a portal into an alternate dimension. A dimension where both Amanda and Woolly exist, and one that when communicated with in a certain way, can cause a merge between realms, unleashing a demonic entity into our reality here on Earth. At this point, we return to the main menu screen and notice a sticker of the entity has appeared on the side of the television screen. There are five endings to unlock in total, and each and every one will be covered in this video. Each time an ending is unlocked and we return to the attic, new possibilities open up based on the information garnered from a previous playthrough. For example, when loading back into the game, we observe the safe has now reappeared, and therefore Riley is now able to enter the code to unlock it. Inside the safe, they find a pause button for the video player, meaning that we can now pause the tapes at any point. There is also a piece of paper, which lines up with a torn page found on the notice board. The page contains symbols which correspond to different colours. These symbols appear on plant pots found on a nearby bookcase. The plant pots can be placed underneath the leaky rafters and then begin to grow into various plants featuring different coloured flowers. Two plant pots in particular come in handy as we make our way through the story of Amanda the Adventurer. Now that the tapes can be paused, Riley decides to do so while viewing the In the Kitchen episode. On the fridge in the background during this shot, you will notice that the viewer is prompted to do so. See how the dial is set to this angle. If we head over to the oven and set the temperature to 575 while the tape is paused, then events alter after we return to watch it. This once again suggests a direct connection between the universe inside these tapes and the world Riley inhabits. Once again, the oven appears in the center of the room, but this time the recipe has changed. A note instructs Riley to make a meat pie. The ingredients are 200 grams of potato, 200 grams of mushroom, and 350 grams of meat. To obtain the meat, we must take the block of cheese and attach it to a trap, which then lures out and snares a rat. The mushroom is found growing next to the leaky roof, and the potato can be grown by matching up the correct plant pot to the recently acquired symbol sheet, and then adding a few drops of water. This recipe, once baked, creates a new version of the In Your Neighborhood tape. Take a listen to this new version of the tape. The atmosphere is gloomier and the audio more warped. Good job! Let's go to the store! Let's pick out a card! My friend... Something bad happened. What kind of card should I send them? While watching the tape, a number of creepy moments occur. In this sequence inside the shop, we cut to a shot of Amanda looking helpless as she laments that something bad happened. She begins to lose hope and starts to look distant. 
Wooly quickly interjects to try and prompt the viewer to help raise her spirits. I don't think we want this. I think Amanda is confused. <laughs> hmm. Shh, here's a secret. It's my birthday. Maybe we can help her out. Wooly's helping hand restores Amanda to her usual perky self. This suggesting that Wooly's purpose in this world is to keep Amanda happy. If she loses hope or becomes too agitated, then the demon is unleashed and manages to escape the confines of these haunted tapes. The tape ends with Amanda asking to go to the candy store to pick up something for her friend, only for the stores to disappear and be replaced by butcher shops. As we click on these butcher shops, Amanda's fury elevates and she becomes distressed actively trying to avoid entering the butcher shop, as if it represents something troubling. No! Why is this happening? No! Why can't I stop this? This isn't the candy store. There is nothing here that I want. Maybe you can take us someplace else? I want to get my friend a special treat. Amanda keeps requesting that we get her friend a special treat, and eventually destroys the town around her. Once again, this seems to symbolise her inner power, and how she unleashes a powerful demon if enraged. The tape concludes with Amanda asking the viewer to address the birthday card. Typing in Wooly allows Amanda to present her sheepish friend with his gift, and abruptly ends the episode. The table is back, and this time features a colouring book. On the pages of a book, cryptic messages read, Where? We went. We tried to. You took me. The task here is to remember the order in which we visit the stores, and then colour the correct store accordingly. The order is always the same. Convenience store, candy shop, butcher shop. However, the drawings become harder to decipher with each turn of a page. Eventually we are taken to this page. On the left side, a padlock is shown with the word Guts spelled out below, and on the right side, a doll is pictured with its head being snipped off by a pair of scissors. Riley heads over to the lockbox and enters the letters G, U, T and S. This unlocks the box and provides them with a new tape titled What's a Family, as well as a pair of scissors. The scissors can be used on the doll perched atop the couch by the TV. However, for now, it has disappeared, and so Riley plays the next tape, which takes place at a petting zoo. It's fun to spend time with animals. They are very different from people. They look different, and they don't talk like people. Amanda, I'm an animal, and I- Animals don't talk, silly. Throughout this tape, Amanda refers to Wooly as an animal, and tries to dehumanise him something that makes Wooly both frustrated and uncomfortable. His frustration seems to be reflected in the environment, with objects such as this barn breathing heavily and turning red from anger. As we explore deeper inside the petting zoo, we begin to see Wooly lose his human traits and become more and more like a sheep, before eventually turning into one completely. The tape ends with Amanda asking the viewer how an orphan kitten must feel. Typing alone prompts Amanda to ask if we will help the kitten, and if we answer yes, she begins to manically smile as if pleasantly surprised. If we type no, then Amanda freaks out, and her demonic form is instead unleashed once more. Won't you help the lonely kitten? Won't you help the lonely kitten? Won't you help the lonely kitten? In order to solve this puzzle, we must pause the episode whenever we see a weather warning message. In the centre of the room is this toy weather wheel. The objective is to match the correct weather report to the corresponding one found on the wheel. This opens a compartment inside the toy which contains the next tape, an updated version of Everything Rots. The tape skips ahead frequently, the audio distorted. Rather than a dead fox, we instead find a stray kitten trapped inside a cage. It looks 
like this kin is in big trouble. It might die before anyone can help it. Should we help the kitten? Helping the kitten ends the tape, and as Riley turns, they discover the attic door is now open, and a bright light floods into the room from below. Heading downstairs, they now find themselves inside the butcher shop from the VHS tapes, the one Amanda was so terrified to visit. In this ending, it seems Riley crossed over into an alternate dimension, and is now trapped inside the tapes themselves. Returning to the game for a third time allows us to conclude Riley's story, and begin piecing together the secret story of Amanda. The doll has now reappeared on the couch, and so we can take the scissors and snip its head, which reveals a set of batteries have been stuffed inside. The batteries can then be placed inside the toy robot Blabbot, powering it up. However, Blabbot requires codes to activate. The first code can be found during tape 2 on the wall inside a convenience store. Enter this code and Blabbot splutters to life. The tape ends and now a cake appears in the centre of the room. Riley must figure out a series of number based puzzles and then input them into the blab bot in order to locate three candles and place them atop the cake. Doing so causes a decidedly creepy birthday song to begin playing. This sugar-coated VHS is an updated version of Oh No Accidents, and in this version of the episode, Willie asks the viewer if they trust him. I don't have much time. Do you trust me? Willie! Ready for an adventure? Amanda! You know you can't- Willie had an accident! Before Riley can answer, Amanda shows up and explains that Willie is unwell and has a head injury. She forces him to drink a strange concoction which places the poor little lamb into a deep sleep. The final chilling sequence of this tape sees Amanda asking for our help to select the appropriate surgical instruments to carry out an operation on Wooly. Our choices do not matter, as Amanda ends up selecting all of the tools at her disposal. She then begins to fight Wooly as she attempts to saw his head open. <laughs> I tricked you! We're going to use all three! <laughs> the patient is getting rowdy. I'll need a little help here. Help me! Please! Ah, who are you going to help? No matter what decision the player makes, Wooly ultimately is overpowered by Amanda, and it is suggested that he dies. Her bloodlust too great to quell. Riley ejects the tape and notices a new one has appeared on the table in the center of the attic. This tape once contained Riley's favourite movies, but seems to have been recorded over. The tape is made up of a string of brief clips. I'm Hi! Tra -tra treat! You may have noticed that some of these clips are taken from early versions of Amanda the Adventurer, a nice easter egg for longtime fans. Turning back to the attic and Riley discovers yet another tape on top of a trap door. It reads Summer 1989, though once again this has been scratched off. This tape is also brief, but listen carefully to what is said. I'm allergic to apple. How many chair? How many mushrooms? How many fruit? How many plate? How many chairs? How many mushrooms? How many fruits? How many lights? By counting how many of each of the previously mentioned things are found around the room, we are given the numerical code 2862. This can then be input into the closet padlock, which opens and provides Riley with a bucket and another tape. From this tape we gain the code 401258. Inputting this code into Blabbot reveals a secret message. The treasure is in the chest. Obviously. But first you need the key to my heart. Because it is not what you have on the outside that matters. It is what you keep on the inside that really counts. 
Blabbot is holding the key inside his little robot body, and so Riley takes the bucket and fills it with water, dumping it over the poor robot who then explodes and reveals the final key. A key that can be used on the treasure chest to reveal, you guessed it, the final tape. This tape is labelled, We Can Share, and playing it reveals Amanda home alone, colouring on the sofa. She asks Riley if they wish to know her big secret. Can I share a secret with you? Are you sure? It's a big secret. Is it really okay to share my secret with you? I'm out there. Somewhere. Amanda is overtaken by the entity within, and the screen begins to loudly glitch out. Panicked, Riley searches around them and comes across a brick. They hurl the brick through the television screen, destroying it before the entity can escape. The sun rises, and our story ends. For now. There are in fact two additional endings that players can unlock here. The first is known as the true ending, where after destroying the TV screen, a mysterious stranger bursts into the attic, dressed in detective attire. It seems they were racing to intervene, but got to the house just too late. The final ending is also abrupt, but far more somber. If we answer no when Amanda asks to share her secret, then the following sequence plays out. Oh. I thought you were different. Now we've taken a look at the surface level story and all endings unlockable within Amanda the Adventurer, let's turn our attention to the game's six secret tapes. The first secret tape is accessed by baking a peach pie rather than an apple pie during the oven puzzle. The peach can be found behind these boxes. This recipe produces an orange tape, which when played shows us a home movie. In this tape, a mother is filming her daughter while she watches an episode of Amanda the Adventurer. The girl's father runs up the stairs to call her down for ice cream and cake, as it appears to be her birthday. However, the little girl is transfixed to the television screen. As the parents turn back from their conversation on the stairs, they realise their daughter has vanished into thin air. The front door now open. We got cake and ice cream, we got your favourite, mint chocolate chip! Come on baby, we can watch Amanda another time! Lauren? Everything okay? Lauren? Mm, Lauren? I love mint chocolate chip. Notice how Amanda comments on the ice cream flavour the father spoke of. This confirming the tapes contain living entities who can communicate directly with whomever watches them. For the second tape, we must load up the first version of the accidents tape, and when Amanda asks, who can help you when you're hurt? If we type in the word nobody, then the secret tape appears alongside a new cutscene. You're probably right. This tape contains an interview between Amanda's show creator, Sam Colton, and a fellow TV presenter working at the studio called Sadie Kappen. Here are some interesting highlights. You know, I really have to thank our local librarian, Miss Kate, for being such a champion of the project. I think she's talked about it at every single story time. What inspired you to create Amanda? The show is a celebration of kids' imaginations. But really, it's all Rebecca. As soon as I met my beautiful daughter, the inspiration was there. You know, she was so young when I adopted her. And despite what she's gone through, she's always seen the world with such kindness and joy. Do you see big things happening with Amanda the Adventurer? I've actually had some people approach me about it. They want to turn Amanda into a cartoon. I can't really talk about it yet, but it's exciting. As you may have heard, Riley's aunt Kate was actually friends with Sam Colton, and this is why she recommended his Amanda show to so many children who visited her library. It is also reiterated the show is based on Sam's adopted daughter Rebecca, who he loved dearly and helped inspire his creative vision. 
we learn Rebecca had been through a tough childhood before Sam adopted her. Yet despite this, she still retained a sense of optimism and joy. It was in fact Rebecca who played Amanda on the show when it originally featured real actors. Sam mentions that a company wishes to turn Amanda the Adventurer into a cartoon show. This company is Hamlin, and while they did turn Colton's show into a cartoon, they also transformed it into something far more insidious. The third tape is acquired by watering the plant pots found in this corner by the trapdoor. After watering it several times, a flower eventually blooms, one that can be placed on the creepy looking doll, who then speaks and hands over a green tape. Thank you, that's my favorite flower. I got a surprise for you, but you'll have to turn around. This tape is filmed by an employee of Hamlin Entertainment, the studio producing the Amanda the Adventurer show. This eavesdropper listens in as Rebecca records lines in the sound booth. We can hear that her father Sam is not happy with the lines she has been asked to read out loud. What is this? What is she reading? Just a few simple words. Uh, this script is specifically tuned to train the technology's dynamic voice reaction. The what? I want this to stop. <sighs> Sam, why don't you take a walk for a few minutes? We've only got a few more of these. No, I the... don't want to do that. Rebecca, what's wrong? Who are you talking to? The man in the headphones. There's no man. She's upset. This is going too far. Let's just take five. Rebecca speaks to the man in the headphones. This is almost certainly the demonic entity found on the tapes. It seems Hamlin were attempting to connect Rebecca to this demon, but masking it as an audio tuning exercise for the show. In fact, the words Rebecca speaks out loud are similar to the names of Ars Gosia, the elite demons of hell. Pie Man relates to Paimon, Balam, Balam, and Bael, Bael. While Hamlin seemed like a normal TV station, it is obvious they were involved in some form of demonology. Secret Tape 4 is unlocked during the Petting Zoo episode at the point where Amanda asks the name of the daddy chicken. If we type in Sam, then a new scene plays out, and a red tape appears in the attic. Wait, what did you say? How do you- This tape contains a news report discussing the sudden disappearance of Sam Colton, as well as comments made by Hamlin Entertainment about his daughter Rebecca and public perception of how the Amanda show had changed since Hamlin took over. It's been three weeks since local television producer Sam Colton was reported missing, and authorities still have no leads. New episodes of Amanda the Adventurer have had subject matter that has left local parents uncomfortable about the program. My kids are still really into that show, but it has changed. I had to change the channel. I just told the kids that the TV was acting up. It's not yet clear how Colton's disappearance will affect the involvement of his daughter Rebecca, the show's young star. We at Hamlin have concerns surrounding the nature of Sam Colton's abandonment of both our program and his daughter. We cannot speculate on his reasons for leaving. We do ask that the community respect the privacy of Rebecca Colton as she needs time out of the spotlight to process these disturbing events. Rest assured that Amanda is not going anywhere. Hamlin Entertainment remains committed to our vision for this cherished program. The fifth tape can be unlocked by playing the piano tune found on the wall of the convenience store during the updated version of the neighborhood tape. Pause the tape and play the tune F-A-C-A-D-E, or Facade, to acquire the secret recording. This time we are shown footage recorded at Hamlin Studios on March 8th, 2002. This footage contains no audible dialogue. We see Rebecca entering an interview room where she speaks with what appears to be a high-ranking member of staff, while being overseen by a female scientist. Rebecca is shown a file full of papers and asked to sign them. She complies and is then led out of a room and down the hall into another room guarded by security. This seems to be footage of Rebecca signing herself over to the care of Hamlin Entertainment. They then became her legal guardians. 
The very last secret tape is so secret that to access it, we must go into the game's save file and alter the value of this line of code, changing it from a 5 to a 6. At least this is the only way I've personally managed to trigger it in the game world. The tape shows Wooly waiting patiently in a back room. Occasionally he does something like bow his head or sneeze, but nothing important ever seems to happen. It seems this is where Wooly waits until he is called to assist Amanda when an episode of a show begins to play. This is Wooly's place of tranquility, the only peace he manages to find in this nightmare realm. And so we come to the end of this video, but before we check out, it's time to quickly bring together everything we've learnt as I offer my best guess as to what exactly happened to the humans involved and how the world of Amanda the Adventurer and our own reality are connected. Everything began when Sam Colton, a struggling writer, adopted a little girl named Rebecca, who inspired him to create a TV show called Amanda the Adventurer, the titular character based on his beloved child. The show, which starred Rebecca, quickly rose to popularity on a local television network, and Sam's friend Kate Park, a local librarian, helped promote it at every opportunity she got. It wasn't long before Sam was approached by TV production company Hamlin Entertainment, who wanted to turn Amanda the Adventurer into a hit cartoon show that could be broadcast around the globe. Sam agreed, and Rebecca was given the opportunity to continue voicing the protagonist Amanda. However, after making the move to cartoon form, the Amanda show began to change. People noticed the themes were becoming darker and more adult. Weird things were being said during the episodes, and children became hypnotised whenever Amanda was on screen. Then they began to vanish from their parents' homes, right from under their noses, as if they plain just disappeared. Sam noticed that the show's directors at Hamlin were getting Rebecca to record some very strange lines, lines with demonic sounding phrases. Rebecca seemed to be communicating with an entity no one else could see or hear. Then one day Sam disappeared, and Rebecca was taken into the care of the studio shortly after. From here we begin to speculate as to what exactly happened. To piece the proverbial puzzle together, we must look at various episodes of The Amanda Show. They are full of metaphors and cryptic clues that help us make some educated guesses, as well as coming to logical conclusions. First of all, I believe Sam Colton was killed by members of Hamlin to stop him meddling in their demonic experimentation. Demonology is the science of studying demons, everything from their hierarchy to their powers and limitations. Hamlin were using Rebecca to summon and communicate with a demonic entity, and then eventually merged it with her and used the VHS tapes to imprison them both. The science of how Rebecca's soul or consciousness was transferred into the Amanda character and trapped inside these tapes is unclear. Because events within the tapes are able to change at any given time, it is obvious they are not simply pre-recorded episodes, but rather exist as an alternate dimension one used to trap the souls of those unfortunate enough to view them. We witness this in the Butcher ending, where Riley walks through the attic door and straight into the VHS realm of Amanda the Adventurer. This explains why children caught under the entity's spell vanish so suddenly. They step through a very normal looking door and into an alternate dimension, one only they could see as a result of connecting with Amanda and the demon within her. Logically, we can conclude that Rebecca was killed during the process of her merging with the demon and transfer onto these tapes. This is why she is so afraid of the butcher shop, as it represents her death. I don't want to go there! I said I don't want to go in there! It also explains why Amanda becomes so sad when she discusses death and mentions how she feels she is And lastly, it explains why she laments that she is still out there somewhere, feeling phantom ties to her rotting corpse, which remains in the human realm. I'm out there... somewhere. Another clue tying the living version of Amanda on these tapes to Rebecca is the fact that she refers to Kate as a friend and wishes to send her a gift. 
In fact, the gift Amanda, and by extension Rebecca, sends to Kate may in fact have been these haunted tapes, which would explain why Willie tries his best to dissuade her, knowing of the damage they will cause. Receiving these tapes may have been the reason why Kate died, accidentally unleashing the entity while watching them. The entity then using Kate to invite Riley to the house to also fall into its trap. We also see the story of how Rebecca was left alone after her father Sam disappeared, represented in these tapes by the stray kitten, an animal Amanda begs us to help. Will you please help the lonely kitten? Won't you help the lonely kitten? Won't you help the lonely kitten? Amanda does not seem to retain Rebecca's memories, but does hold on to her joyful personality. Yet her tragic demise seems to subconsciously haunt her, explaining why we so often see her fall into moments of great sadness or anger. When this sadness or anger takes hold for too long, the Rebecca side of Amanda fades away, allowing the demon side to take control and break free from its prison within these tapes transcending into the human realm to claim fresh souls. Enter Wooly, a safety measure of sorts, intended to stop Rebecca from diminishing and the demon taking control of Amanda. Throughout the game we see Wooly reassuring or reasoning with her, or trying to take her mind off anything that currently troubles her. Okay, it's time to bake a pie! First, preheat the oven to 425... I don't think we should be using the oven by ourselves. We should always ask a parent to help. Maybe you can take us someplace else? Let me out of here! Wow, Amanda. That's... that's a nice birthday card. Do you want to give it to your friend now? These are all traits that belong to a parent, and therefore it makes sense that Wooly is in fact Rebecca's father Sam. Sam was the first to disappear after Hamlin sought to stop him meddling in their experiments involving his daughter Rebecca. This event is represented in the tape by the fox, who became caught in a trap and then died. But why dispose of Sam completely when he can be imprisoned inside the video realm alongside both the entity and his daughter? Hamlin knew that while Sam wouldn't retain the memories of exactly who he once was, his consciousness would still feel naturally drawn to Amanda and feel protective over her. Precise memories may have been gone from those who were trapped in this realm, but as Amanda herself has proven, these souls still feel a familiarity to remnants of their past lives. Rebecca doesn't feel as drawn to Sam as he does to her because she shares Amanda's body with the demon, who attempts to corrupt her at every turn. However, Wooly is a beacon of hope in this world, and this is thanks to the inclusion of Sam Colton's soul and his bond to Rebecca. From everything we know about Sam, he seemed to be a good character and kind of heart. This also explains why he tries to warn the viewer of the danger they are in at every given opportunity, and is desperate to stop the madness that Hamlin started. We, we don't have much time. Do you trust me? Wooly! Ready for an adventure? Amanda! So Sam was included as a calming influence to try and keep Rebecca present and the entity dormant, thus allowing Hamlin to continue collecting up children who viewed the show, trapping them inside the tapes as a sacrificial offering to the entity they summoned and desperately wished to contain. It also seems that Sam on occasion fails, and when he does, the demon exerts its influence to diminish him. We see this during the petting zoo tape where Wooly loses his humanity and on the hospital tape, where the demon uses Amanda to attack him directly. But what of a mystery man who burst into the attic at the very end of the game during that true ending? Well, my personal theory is that this was an ex-employee of Hamlin, the whistleblower eavesdropping and recording evidence to use against Hamlin as seen in the secret tapes. They may even be the ones who provided all of the secret tapes to Kate before her unfortunate demise rushing to try and save Riley after they trigger Amanda's demonic form, suggesting that this whistleblower had the attic under surveillance the entire time and were watching from the shadows, collecting evidence in order to eventually expose Hamlin for their crimes against humanity. 
We do after all see the many bodies of the victims in both the butcher's store and on the streets outside. Hamlin must be stopped, and perhaps this whistleblower and Riley can team up to expose the truth, shut down Hamlin, and free the souls of Rebecca and her father Sam while simultaneously vanquishing the demon trapped inside these haunted tapes with them. But for now, the story of Amanda the Adventurer comes to an end. And with that, we wrap up this extensive look at the story, endings, and secrets of Amanda the Adventurer. This was a big video, and it took me a long time to put together, so thank you for waiting patiently while I did so. I hope you found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.